ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له فاشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله verily the praise belongs to Allah we praise him seek his assistance and forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil consequences of our deeds who of Allah guides there is no one that can lead him astray and whoever Allah leads astray there is no one that can guide him I bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone and that he has no partners or associates and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. This evening, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, this is our sec- second uh, lecture or second session dealing with the book Ta'zeem al-Salah. And this book yani, covers many important points that make clear to us the great importance of salah in the life of a Muslim its magnificence and its exalted lofty sublime station status or rank in the life of a Muslim the author of our book is Sheikh Abdul Razak the son of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al-Abad Al-Badr Hafidhahumullah may Allah protect and preserve both of them and he has as we mentioned last week and he primarily collected any topics that he had delivered in the form of a khutbah on Yawm al-Jum'ah in various places uh, today bi idhnillahi ta'ala we would like to continue the discussion from last week and he dealing with the importance some clear matters which show the importance of salat its great significance and worth and value and why a Muslim should be careful and attentive in the preparation for and performance of the Salah every single day, every time we pray. Before we go into the topic, the second chapter of the book, before we go into the topic of Salah, Salah, which is the topic for the second chapter, we'd like to review quickly some of what we covered last week from the introduction and matters related to the author uh, and the first chapter which we dealt with last week. So, yani before, we take any, before I yani repeat the questions from the study guide from last week, I'd just like to see, just for myself, <laughs> how many people attempted to answer the questions from the study guide from last week. How many people attempted, made an attempt? <laughs> you weren't here? You didn't get one. Do we have your email address? Yes. We have it? Yes. Then you got it then, if we have it. Because I sent it to everybody. Get some help. There are a lot of young people here, mashallah. They can help you. All the young people don't know how to do this stuff. I understand. Believe me, I understand. I'm almost old as you are. <laughs> Saeed, get some help, please. Uh, okay. So, I say then that, brothers and sisters, it is really important, and for your benefit, it's not as an examination, but for your own benefit, to attempt to answer the questions from the study guide. The purpose of the study guide is for you to evaluate your own self on what you have retained and what you have understood. If you are not able to answer those questions, and most of them, or at least some of them, then... That means you need to go back and look at it again, look at the topic again. Because these questions are all taken directly from the topic that was presented. So if you have a bad memory and you don't know how to take notes, then get a recorder, telephone, anything that records, record it. So you can go back and listen to it. Strengthen your memory. Okay, I encourage everyone to please make an attempt to answer the questions. Even if you don't want to answer the questions in class, 
in the review, but at least for your own benefit, so you can see where you're at. What did you, yani, gain? What did you retain? What did you understand? This is a part of learning, really. It's a part of learning. Learning is not relaxation. It's not entertainment. It's struggling, striving, making some effort. If you don't make any effort, you won't get much out of it. Okay, anyway, this is a reminder. Inshallah, a zikr uh, yani benefits the people of Iman. So the first question we have from last week's study guide, the introduction in three parts, the title of the book in Arabic and English. The title of the book in Arabic and English. Naam, Isa. Ta'zim al salah Naam. The great importance and magnificence of salat. Naam, naam. Recognizing, acknowledging the magnificence and the greatness and the importance of salat. Recognizing this, acknowledging this, being conscious of it and then acting upon it. Yani ta'zim al salat it means to exalt, to extol this act of worship in a way that is befitting of the one who we are worshipping. Allah al Azim. So ta'zim al salat means that you recognize that Allah is Al-Azim. And you recognize that this Salah is important because of who it's being offered to. And so you give it care. This is very important. Uh, second part of the first question, the author's name, date of birth and education. In brief, name, Naam. Sheikh Abdul Razak. Sheikh Abdul Razak. Ibn Abdul Muhsin. Al-Abad Al-Badr. Hafidhahumullah. May Allah protect and preserve both of them. Date of birth. Lul Qaada, 22nd, 1382. Jayid, his education in brief. Medina, University, Naam. <laughs> Naam. He did his studies in Medina University. His undergraduate, bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD degree. Naam. The second uh, part of this question, his teachers, writings, and occupation. Teachers, writings, and occupation. Naam. Uh, Abdul Muhsin, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, his father. Imam Abdul Aziz ibn Ibaz, Rahimahullah. Imam Muhammad ibn Sali Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah. And who? Sheikh Ali Nasr al Faqih. Hafidhullah. May Allah protect and preserve him. Naam. Writings? Somebody give me one, one of his books. Naam. Fiqh al Adaiyah wal Adhkar. Naam. Somebody give me another book. Another book. Naam. Causes behind increase and decrease of Iman. Naam. Another book. So a lot of his books have been translated into English. Now, Methodology of Ahl Sunnah and Uniting the Ummah. Now, other. The explanation, Sharh of Al Adab Al Mufrad by Imam Al Bukhari. Now, Rahimahullah. Now, 50 points of benefit from the story of Luqman. Now, Al Hakim. Now, what else? And many other books. He has a lot of books. A lot of books. So many. So many. Subhanallah. Now, um, occupation. Now, he's a professor in the Jamia Islamia. Now, in Medina. Now, okay. After this, we said uh, <coughs> Question number two. Mention the reward along with three conditions necessary to receive it or to achieve it. Related to the performance of the obligatory salah from the hadith of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu reported by Al Imam Muslim. <laughs> the reward and the three conditions necessary to achieve it. Somebody else, please, help us. Somebody else. What is the reward that we mention in the hadith of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu reported by Al Imam Muslim? Naam. Expiation of sins, past sins. Naam. As long as, as long as you didn't commit the major sin, <coughs> Naam. So, what are the conditions that's mentioned in the hadith? Naam, Abdullah. Uh huh. Wudu, khushur. Somebody help him. Rukur. Specifically, though, what about wudu and khushur and ruku? Specifically, or more specifically, Naam, uh, Abdul Rashid. The perfection. Fayyuhsinu wudu aha. وَخُشُوعَهَا وَرُكُوعَهَا Yani the person, there is no believing, no Muslim person 
when the salat, the time of the salat comes, obligatory prayer, and that person yuhsinu wudu'aha wa khushu'aha wa ruku'aha illa kana kafaratan lima khablaha min al-dhunub alam yu'ti kabira wa thalika al-dahr kullahu what is the meaning of this? Yuhsin al wudu meaning that he performs it well, performs it perfectly, with excellence, not carelessly. And this requires that a person study al wudu study it, know exactly how is it performed, the proper manner, and then to give care to it. And al khushur al khushur to do it well, al khushur What is al khushur Humility, a state of being humble, in submission, in awe of standing before Rabbil Alameen. And the Ruku we know, right? Well. But how do you perform it? The Prophet ﷺ said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as you have seen me praying. It is incumbent upon a Muslim to examine how did the Prophet ﷺ pray? How did he perform Ruku? How did he perform Sujood? To know it well and then to practice it. Some people know it but they don't practice it. Some people they say, I read that book. I, I read it, I read it. But it doesn't appear as though you read it. You're not practicing it. Do you know how you have to perform ruku perfectly? Well, to do it well? Do you know what you have to do? If you don't know, you can't do it. And then if you know, that's not enough. But you have to then act upon it. Anyway, let's go on to the next question. That's another topic, inshallah, we'll come back to it. Question number three. Summarize the hadith of Al-Aswad. Related by Aisha radiallahu anha. As reported in Al-Bukhari. And the significance of this Hadith. Can you summarize the meaning of this hadith? The hadith. Now. Um, one Sahabi was talking to Aisha and he was talking about the Salat. So then she like, reminded him about the point the Prophet was saying he was the sick, the sickness that killed him after that. Aisha radiallahu anhu reminded them about the sickness from which the Prophet died. Now. Uh-huh. And then at that time the event was announced. Uh huh. The prayer. The, ta- the time for the prayer came, the adhan was announced, and the Prophet ﷺ told them to command Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu to lead the prayer, to lead the people in prayer. Naam. It was said to him, it was Aisha Naam, but in the hadith it doesn't say it was her Naam. He said that he's that he's soft hearted and he wouldn't be able to lead the people in prayer. Because, yeah, and he, she didn't say that, but in other narrations it mentioned that he cries when he recites the Quran. Naam. After she said that first, after she said that, help us somebody. After she said that, what happened? The Prophet ﷺ said, he told them again to order Abu Bakr to leave the Salat. And they repeated their argument. And he told them a third time. And the third time he said what? You are like? <laughs> Sawahib Yusuf. What do we mean by Sawahib Yusuf? It's going back to the story of Yusuf ﷺ. Who, what happened when the ladies was saying, or lady was, one lady, she was saying something different than what was the reality of the matter, and that's what Aisha radiallahu anha was doing, she was saying something different than the reality of the matter. She was saying he's soft hearted, in reality she was trying to what? Get him to relieve Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, her father, from this, this tremendous obligation of leading the Muslim ummah. Naam. So after that, he said that, and he said again, order him, muru. Abu Bakr فَيُصَلِّ بِالنَّاسِ to, He commanded, to command Abu Bakr to lead the people in prayer. And then, you want to finish it? Now. <laughs> Before that. Before the Prophet ﷺ came out. Abu Bakr came out. He was ordered, he came out, and he led the people in prayer. He began to pray. Then, Now. Now. Then the Prophet ﷺ came out with two men carrying him on each side, carrying him, and his feet were dragging due to the sickness, the condition that he was in. Now, until Abu Bakr tried to get him back, to move back, to let the Prophet ﷺ lead the prayer, but he told him, "Stay there, stay in your place, mechanic." Now. Now, so in the end of the hadith, it says that he, they placed him, the Prophet ﷺ, besides Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and the Prophet ﷺ was praying, leading the prayer, and Abu Bakr was following his prayer. 
And the, and the people were following Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, his prayer. Now, what is the significance of this hadith? In brief, the most important point from this hadith. Now, most important point. The importance of Salat. The importance of Salat. How is it show the importance of Salat? Mustafa. Even his condition was like that. He couldn't even walk. People were carrying him, dragging him to go across the floor to come and pray. That's how important is the Salat. Not only is the Salat in Jama'ah. He could have prayed at home in his bed. But in Jama'ah. Now, this needs to be examined, but we don't have enough time to examine it. But this is something that we need to reflect upon. Did anybody receive the video? 30 seconds. Of a man almost 100 years old. And what was he doing? He was walking to the masjid to pray in Jama'ah. He had a cane in one hand and holding the wall on the other hand. And how was his steps? Little steps. Slow. But he was what? Determined to pray in Jama'ah. Look at ourselves. What is our condition? This is something to think about. Wallahi. A man has to think about this. Do we understand that the prayer in the Jama'ah is obligatory upon men? Isn't that something voluntary? If you like or don't? Some people understand that and some people don't. May Allah give us success in doing that which is pleasing to Him. Question number four, quickly, mention the first indication or proof of the magnificence, the lofty status and importance of Salat in the life of a Muslim. The first proof that the author mentions, now, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Salat obligatory on every prophet, every prophet, every prophet, all of them. And He also informed us of how they magnified and I need the way that they viewed the importance of Salat. This is the first evidence that the Shaykh mentions. And he mentioned a lot of evidences concerning to this. From amongst them, question number five, mention the names of three prophets, alayhi salatu wassalam, upon whom Allah made the Salat obligatory along with the ayat of Quran where each one of them is mentioned. And he mentioned one prophet, alayhi salam, and يعني, an ayat related to him and the Salat. Naam. The Sha- Prophet Shu'aib alayhi salam, naam. What was said about the Prophet Shu'aib? They said, Oh Shu'aib, your, your salat command that you command that we give up without a fault of you to worship or that we give up doing what we like. Naam. Naam. Does your salat, as salatuka ta'amurka, is it your salat that is, co- is commanding you, ordering you to prohibit us from worshipping as our fathers used to worship? Worshipping that what they used to worship and using our wealth however we like? Is it your salat? How does this, how is this ayat, any uh, proof here? <laughs> now. They saw in him that the most important thing in his life was the salat. They said, is it your salat? This, is it this salat that's making you to prohibit us from worshipping what our fathers used to worship? They understood that this is the most important thing in his life. What about us? What about us? Now, another prophet. Now, I'm, uh, in the back, of Musa. Uh, Ismail. 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 Somebody help us. Huh? And remember the mention of Ismail in the book. Mention Ismail in the book. What? He He was truthful in fulfilling a promise. He kept a promise. If he made a promise, he kept it. Very important. And after that? And he was a messenger and a prophet. This is it right here. What? He used to order and command his family with salat and zakat. He used to command his family. He didn't just pray by his pray and later for them. Rather, you're also responsible for your family. You're also responsible for your family, especially if you're the head of the family. But even if you're not, your brothers and sisters and everybody else, and your neighbors and everybody, remind people about salat. This is very important. But especially your family. It's obligatory upon you. One more prophet. Now. Isa alayhi salam. Surah Maryam. Surah Maryam. 30 and 31. 
مباركا اينما كنت كنت واوصاني 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 بالصلاه والزكاه ما كنت حيا نعم جيد what is the meaning عيسى عليه السلام he said what where the I am the slave the servant the worshiper of Allah نعم he has given me the book and he has made me a prophet and he has made me to be blessed wherever I am and he has ordered me with salah and zakat as long as I am living نعم last prophet one more we had a lot of them mashallah نعم Isa Yunus alayhi salam Surah Safat, Ayat, what? 133 to 134. 133 to 134. Nam, meaning? If he wasn't among the people that made it, or the people that and he would have remained in the belly of the whale until the day when people are raised up. Now, if it wasn't for what? That he, if it wasn't for the fact that he was from the Musabbihin, the Musalleen. Now, and, and there were many other prophets that Shaykh mentioned, about ten different examples of different prophets, and all of them are very important, alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay, the last, last question, summarize the hadith in which it is mentioned that our five times of prayer were the same for all the previous Prophets, alayhi salatu wasalam. Summarize the hadith. Now. The angel Jibril came to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasalam. And he prayed him all the salawat. And he led him in prayer. All the salawat in the early times. And he led him in prayer where? The in the Bayt, at the Kaaba. How many times? Twice. Well, two days. Now. The first day he led him in prayer in the early in the First early day he led him in the prayer in the earliest time. The second day he let him in prayer in the latest time. Now, that the time of the prayer is fima baina al waqtaini. The time for the prayer is between these two times. Hada waqtu al anbiya min qablika. Or qablika. Now. So, the Prophet ﷺ in this hadith, he's mentioning actually the time of each prayer. The earliest time, it's the beginning of his time. And in the second time, he mentions the time that he was led in prayer by the angel Jibreel salam, which was the latest time of each prayer. And those pi- times, inshallah, are well known to us. If they're not, we need to know them. And we don't have time. This is not a fit class today. So we don't have time for it. But inshallah, it's something important for us to know. What is the beginning of the time? What is the end of the time? And always try to pray in the beginning of the time. For men, try to pray in the Jama'ah in the masjid. As we will see today, we're going to talk about this in a little detail. Now, <laughs> okay, this is a somewhat lengthy review, but la bas. <laughs> Allah Mustaan. Was it true that Shuayi was blocked? Questions are in the end, inshallah. Related to the topic. Fayyid al salah al salah. The Shaykh says, Inna min akbar al masaib wa ajalliha wa a'zamiha. وأشدها مصيبة الأمة بوفاة النبي الكريم عليه الصلاة والسلام الذي من الله على أمته ببعثته وكان دليلهم إلى الجنة وقائدهم إلى كل فضيلة وإمامهم في كل خير and here he quotes the saying of Allah سبحانه وتعالى in Surah Al-Ahzab 33rd Surah 21st Ayat لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا. يعني the Sheikh says that indeed from amongst the biggest calamities or disasters and the greatest of them and the most supreme and the most severe of them is the calamity that befell this ummah with the death of the noble prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. The one who Allah blessed this ummah by missioning him, by sending him. And he was their dalil, their guide to the Jannah. Now, is this a musibah? He was the guide to the Jannah. And he was their qaid, their leader in every fadila. In every fadila, yani in every good quality, in everything of excellence, he was the leader. And he was their imam. 
fi kulli khairin. In everything that is good, he was the imam, the model, the example that the people can follow. So his loss indeed was from amongst the greatest, the most severe, the most supreme. Calamities that befell the ummah. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says indeed, yani the meaning of which he mentions, indeed there is for you in the Messenger of Allah, uswa hasana, a good, excellent example, model to be followed in the Messenger of Allah. For whoever has hope in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah, much. He's our model. He's our example. And in this salah is our topic now, but he's our model in everything. In worship, in marital relations, social, business, interactions, in everything. He's our model. He's our example. But in salah, that's what we're talking about here now. He's our example that we're looking to to follow. What is the example that he's left for us? In this event that we're going to talk about briefly tonight, and we started to talk about it last week. We're going to talk about it again tonight. And in the death of the Prophet wasallam, he says in this great event, there are many, many things to consider. Ibar. Many things to consider. And there are a number of lessons, durus, that it is befitting of us that we stop upon them and reflect upon them. Which event? The death of the Prophet wasallam. And from the greatest of those things that we should consider and think about, the examples, the lessons that are in this event, is that which is related to the affair of the salah and the clarification of the status or the position of the salah in Islam. In, in this event, there is a great example and a lesson and something to reflect upon. They are profound, it is a profound lesson and an example that should have an effect a tremendous effect that will be derived from this great event and this yani, weighty calamity, the death of the Prophet The Shaykh says, لَقَدْ كَانَ آخِرَ صَلَاةٍ صَلَّاهَا نَبِيُّنَا عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةِ وَالسَّلَامِ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ صَلَاةُ الظُّهْرِ مَنْ يَوْمِ الْخَمِيسِ yani The last prayer that the Prophet prayed with the believers in Jama'ah, the last prayer that he prayed with believers in his life, he said it was the Dhuhr Salat, and it was Yawm Khamis on a Thursday. This is history. The last prayer that he prayed in Jama'ah with the believers was Salat al Dhuhr on a Yawm Khamis. Then he, alayhi salatu was salam, yani his sickness, his ailment became more severe after that prayer, Dhuhr prayer on Yawm Khamis. So he remained for three days. He was unable to come out for the prayer due to the severity of the sickness. And those three days were Yawmul Jumu'ah, Yawmul Sabt and Yawmul Ahad. Juma, Saturday and Sunday. He couldn't come out for the Salat. The last time he came out was on Yawm Khamis, Dhuhr. And three days came, he didn't come out at all. Yawmul Jumu'ah, Yawmul Sabt, Yawmul Ahad. After that, Thursday. Yani the following day, Saturday, he didn't come out at all. Sunday, he didn't come out at all. Monday, he didn't come out at all. I mean, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Not Monday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Monday, he came. And he came out on Thursday. He didn't come out on Friday at all. He didn't come out Saturday at all. He didn't come out Sunday at all. At all. No, he didn't come out. He didn't come out after that. He, that was the last prayer he prayed. Zuhr prayer, Yawm al Khamis. At this time, Abu Bakr al Siddiq was taking his place, leading the people in prayer as the Imam of the Muslims in the Salat. Radiallahu anhu. So in the Fajr prayer on Yawm al Ithnain, the fourth day, Yawm al Ithnain, in the Fajr prayer, the day in which the Prophet died, he removed the curtain from his room to take a look. And his companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'een. Yani a farewell look. Nadrat al wada And what a farewell look it was. The hadith is reported by al-Bukhari and Muslim in their two sahihs from Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu. Anna Aba Bakrin kana yusalli lahum fi waja'i 
النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي توفي فيه حتى إذا كان يوم الاثنين وهم صفوف في الصلاة فكشف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ستر الحجرة ينظر إلينا وهو قائم كأن وجهه ورقة المصحف And indeed it was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu who was leading the people in prayer during the time of the sickness of the Prophet ﷺ, the sickness from which he died. Until it was Yawmul Ithnain, Yani Yawmul Ithnain. <coughs> and the people were lined up in the Salah. And the Prophet ﷺ, he opened, he pulled back the curtain from his room and he was Anis radiallahu anhu says he was looking at us. Yanzuru ilayna. And he was standing. And it was as though his face. Yani was waraqatu mushaf. Yani something radiant, bright, beautiful. Thumma tabassama. Yadhaqu. Fahamamna an naftatina. Min farahi bi ra'yati nabi. Then the Prophet smiled and he laughed. And Anas radiallahu anhu said that we were about almost at the point of yani, being put to trial. They were in salat and they were almost at the point of being put to trial. Yani, to leave the salat due to the happiness that they experienced at seeing the Prophet. فناقص أبو بكر رضي الله عنه على عقبيه ليصل الصف وظن أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم خارج إلى الصلاة. So Abu Bakr began to re- retreat, to go backwards, to get into the line with the people in the first line, thinking that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was coming out of the salah as he did on يوم الخميس in صلاة الظهر. فأشار إلينا. النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن أتموا صلاتكم وأرخى الستر فتوفي من يومه Instead the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم signaled for them to complete your salat complete your salat and then he let down the curtain and he died in that day So let us reflect. Let those reflect who would reflect. Those who would consider. This is our Prophet ﷺ. He is looking at his ummah in the masjid. That look of farewell. The look is the look of joy, of happiness for him والسلام, for indeed the salah, it was the joy, it was the qurta aynihi, yani it was the coolness of his eyes, the thing that pleased him more than anything else. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah had given him that pleasure, the pleasure of his eyes. Yani to see the Muslims in the morning of the day of his passing, to see his ummah mujtami'ina fil masjid ala hadha salah. To see his ummah gathered together in the masjid to perform the salat. Gathering together in jama'ah, in the masjid. Performing the thing that was most pleasing to him, alayhi salatu wasalam. So he smiled and he laughed, alayhi salatu wasalam. And this smile, it was the smile of joy and happiness. And this laugh was the laugh of intimacy or friendship and delight and happiness. At his seeing his ummah gathered together in the masjid for the salah. And when he let down the curtain, alayhi salatu wasalam, yani he was satisfied, he was happy, he was delighted with the sight that he has seen. A joyful, delightful sight. A pleasant, pleasing image of his ummah. The ummah of Islam. Gathered together in the masjid performing the salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the joy of his eyes, the coolness of his eyes, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. With this image, 
this beautiful, delightful image and this joyous condition that he saw his people in. And this, yani, this idea that we have, Walaikum Salam, of the greatness and the value of the Salah, it is not yani, resting solely upon this event in the last moments of his life, alayhi salatu wasalam. Rather, there are many other proofs and evidences that point to the greatness of Salah besides this. If it was this alone, it would have been sufficient for us, for the one who reflects. That a person at the time of their death, that they have a chance to experience that which they love most in this world. And that was, was what he loved most. But rather there are other indications. Ali radiallahu anhu, he said, as it is reported by Imam Ahmed in the Musnad, and also reported by Abu Dawud and Ibn Majah, and Shaykh al-Bani said in Jami al-Sahih, or Sahih al-Jami, that it is Sahih, the Isnad that is confirmed. From Ali radiallahu anhu, he said, كَانَ آخِرُ كَلَامِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلاة, الصلاة اتقوا الله في ما ملكت إيمانكم الصلاة, الصلاة اتقوا الله في ما ملكت إيمانكم The prayer, the prayer Observe taqwa of Allah in that which your right hands possess The last كَانَ آخِرُ كَلَامِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلاة, الصلاة بل جاء ما هو أبلغ من هذا فيما رواه ابن ماجة في سننه بسند ثابت يعني that which is more profound than this came in that which is reported by ابن ماجة in his sunan with an isnad that is sahih الشيخ الباني in إرواء القليل said that is sahih from Anas بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال كانت عامة وصية رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هنا حضرته الوفاة وهو يغرغر بنفسه الصلاة وما ملكت إيمانكم يعني that the general advice the thing that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was saying all the time his, his general advice at the time when death came to him mostly what he was saying even to the time when he was struggling to breathe at the time when his soul was being taken from him when his soul was departing from him he was saying الصلاة وما ملكت إيمانكم the salat and be careful with those whom Allah has placed under your care in your hands your slaves that which your right hands possess وَجَاءَ أَيْدًا مِنْ رِوَايَةُ أُمْ سَلَمَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا زَوْجَ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه كان عامة وصية النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عند موته الصلاة الصلاة وما ملكت إيمانكم it even came in another narration from Umm Salama one of the wives of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم رضي الله عنها that the general advice and instruction of the Prophet of Allah وسلم, at the time of his death was as salat as salat wa ma malakat imanukum hatta jala nabi even to the point that the Prophet وسلم, kept saying this over and over and over again and this was what was abounding pouring forth from his tongue at the time of his death yani as salat as salat wa ma malakat imanukum and there is no doubt that this points to the greatness of the status of Salah in Islam and the greatness of the care of our Prophet ﷺ with the Salah. And whoever reads the Ahadith, the noble Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and his yani, outstanding advices in his lifetime, throughout his life, all of this points to the worth, the value of Salah and the station of Salat in Islam. وَقَدْ كَانَ مِنْ شَأْنِ هَذِهِ الصَّلَاةِ وَمَكَانَتِهَا أَنَّهَا خُصَّتْ مِنْ بَيْنِ فَرَادِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَأُمُومِ الطَّاعَاتِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى أَرَّجَ بِنَبِيِّهِ إِلَى مَا فَوْقِ السَّمَاءِ السَّبَعَةِ وَفَرَضَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةِ مِنْ فَوْقِ السَّبْعِ السَّمَوَاتِ يعني from those things Yani that show the greatness of the status of Salat is that it has been singled out especially from amongst the other obligatory duties of Islam and the general acts of obedience in Islam. It has been singled out from everything else in that Allah Taala He has caused His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
to ascend in the ascension to ascend to above the seven heavens and made obligatory upon him the salat from above the seven heavens yani the obligation of salat was given to the prophet sallallahu after allah had caused him to ascend above the seven heavens wa samiya al amr biha wa fardaha min allah tabarak wa ta'ala bila wasita and the prophet sallallahu heard this command to perform the salat and its obligation from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala without any in between medium not as a revelation that came through an angel Jibreel alayhi salam but rather directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he made obligatory upon him 50 prayers and he asked Allah jalla wa ala to reduce them <coughs> so he reduced them to 5 prayers so the 5 prayers they were 5 prayers in number but there were 50 prayers in reward. The reward will, will be equal to 50 prayers. As though you have performed 50 prayers. While other acts of obedience, generally speaking, and all obligatory duties and acts of worship, they have come down to the Prophet ﷺ on the earth by being revealed through the angels Jibreel salam. Him making them clear and him revealing them to the Prophet ﷺ. وَهَذَا يُبَيِّنْ لَنَا مَكَانَةُ الصَّلَاةِ الْعُظْمَى And this makes clear to us the supreme great status of prayer. Here the shaykh says, <laughs> here the shaykh says, and we are, and it is, يعني وَمِنْ أَسِفٍ يعني it is, I don't know, يعني it is unfortunate, we are sorry to say, that the condition of some of the people have reached the point that they have made Laylatul Isra wal Mi'raj. The Laylatul Isra wal Mi'raj. The night of the, the, yani, the night journey and the ascension to the seven heavens. They have made it Laylatul Ihtifal. A night of partying. Yani this great event of the Prophet Wasallam ascending to the seven heavens and the Salat being made obligatory on that occasion. That's how important the salat was. They made it into what? What was important to them on this occasion? Parties. Celebrations. They have no basis in Islam. Where they are reciting qasaid. And they are chanting arajis. Yani different types of poetry. While they have given no care to the salat. And they have even yani, lost it. Who is it that has commanded them with this? These parties these celebrations on the occasion of this great event who is it that has commanded them with the shaykh says who is it that has called them to this and where are they in reference to the affair of the mi'raj the ascension of the prophet sallallahu and what came in it the great tremendous lesson and this magnificent significant command to protect and preserve this salat. Where are they in reference to this? Yani what? Do they have any care about this matter? <coughs> so you see some of them being very lax with the salat, even having disdain for the salat. Disdain for the salat. Wallahi. But they will not let pass one of these celebrations, one of these innovated newly invented celebrations they will not let it pass rather they give full attention to it in preparation and participation so the shaykh says فَأَيْنَ هَؤُلَاءِ مِنْ حَقِيقَةِ الْإِتِّبَاءِ وَالْإِقْتِدَاءِ وَالْإِعْتِسَاءِ بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ so where are these people yani where do they stand in reference to strictly following and following taking the example and the pattern and the model of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Where are these people in that? أَيْنَ هَؤُلَاءِ مِنْ تَبَسُّمَ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَضَحِكِهِ وَقُرْتَ عَيْنِهِ بِرُؤْيَةِ أُمَّتِهِ مُجْتَمِيَةٍ عَلَى هَذِهِ الصَّلَاةِ Where do these people stand in reference to this the smiling of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his laughing and the coolness of his eyes in seeing his Ummah gathered together in jama'ah for the performance of this salat yani what do they know about this what do they care about it where do they stand in reference to it 
has no importance to them at all. It's not even in their minds. But for us, inshallah, it should be a tremendous lesson, a dars, a ibr, something to reflect upon and to consider. The greatness of this affair in our everyday life, in every salat that we perform, especially the obligatory prayers, but even the voluntary prayers. In every salat, when we're standing before Allah, we should be thinking that we are doing something that is magnificent, is tremendous, is great. This is not an ordinary act that we are just yani, having a sandwich or having a conversation with your friend. You're standing in front of Allah, in front of Allah, Rabbil Alameen. Now, person has to think about this. Because otherwise, sometimes we go to pray with the intention of praying and then we lose our attention, our focus and we just go through the salat. We don't know what we did in the salat. Maybe even from the takbir, from the beginning, you didn't pay attention that you're saying Allahu Akbar. What does this mean? We didn't pay attention to that. We didn't pay attention to the supplication that we said in the beginning of the salat. What, what are we saying? What does it mean? Do you think about these words? Tremendous, tremendous words that we are saying. But are we reflecting on them? Or have we said them so many times that yeah, it's just automatic pilot till the end of the salat. Al-Fatiha, Ruku, Sujood, all of it. Indeed, the Shaykh says, those who love the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with true love, they will translate this love and they will express it in ittiba sadiq, truthful following. And iqtida tam, complete and perfect, taking his example. Wa ta'assin, yani in following the pattern of his guidance, bihadihi, wa ittiba sunnatihi, and strictly following his sunnah, alayhi salatu wasalam. This is how you express your love for the Prophet, sallallahu by following him strictly. Taking his example, taking him as a model in everything in life, but especially in this our topic and our salat. Do we perform salat as he did? Do we love the salat as he did? Do we give care to the salat as he did? If we know how he gave, what he gave to it, the attention and care and the excellence of his performance of salat, then how does that affect us? Do we follow him in that? Or we just Sunni, we Sunni, Salafi. What does that mean? Sunni. I mean, you follow the Sunnah. In what? In speech? Or in action? In life? In character? In manners? In worship? Especially first and foremost in Salat. If you don't have it in Salat, perhaps it will be nowhere else. As the Prophet ﷺ said in some hadith. That if a person's Salat is accepted, the rest of their deeds will also be accepted. And if it's rejected, the rest of their deeds will also be rejected. This is how important the Salat is. So it is not translated. Your love of the Prophet ﷺ is not expressed... <coughs> and you do not express your love of the Prophet ﷺ by establishing parties and celebrations and inventing seasons for these celebrations and the like of it of that which some of the people have been tested and tried with as a fitna, as a ibtila while they are claiming that this, these parties and celebrations are due to their love of the Prophet ﷺ. Wallahi, the Shaykh said, Wallahi thumma wallahi, I swear by Allah, if this indeed had been from the love, true love of the Prophet ﷺ, and from the following, and true, sincere following of the Prophet ﷺ, then the first people who would have done it would have been the noble companions of the Prophet ﷺ. If this was real love and following of the Prophet they would have been the first ones who did it. And the tabi'oon, lahum bi ihsan, and those who follow them in excellence. وَلَكِنَ الصَّحَابَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ وَمِنَ اتَّبَعَهُمْ بِي إِحْسَانِ لَمْ يَفْعَلُوا شَيْئًا مِنْ ذَلِكَ But rather the, the companions of the Prophet وسلم, and those who follow them, they didn't do any of these things that these people do. None of it at all whatsoever. Nothing resembling it. Rather, their actions was in following the Prophet ﷺ, taking him as example of his sunnah and sticking to his guidance. Sticking to it. Alayhi salatu was salam. As salat, as salat. Yani this was the advice of our Prophet. Alayhi salatu was salam. And it was from the last of the things that were heard from him. Alayhi salatu was salam. So, O oh, you who love the Prophet, true love, as salat, as salat. This is the wasiyah, yani the advice, the instruction, the legacy 
that the Prophet ﷺ has left for you. This is the covenant that he has left for you. And it has come to us in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, with the Isnad that is Jayyid. And the Shaykh says that Al Imam Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, rahimahullah, has declared this Isnad to be Hassan in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, that the Salat was mentioned to the Prophet ﷺ one day. And he said, Man hafadha alayha kanat lahu nuran wa burhanan wa najatan yawmul qiyamah. That whoever guards, preserves, gives care to making sure that they perform the salah, then on yawmul qiyamah it will be for them a light. And it will be for them a burhan, a proof in their behalf. And it will be a means of najat, of safety. Yani to be saved, salvation to be saved on yawmul qiyamah. It will be for them a nur, a light of guidance, and a burhan, and a proof on their behalf, and a najat, a, a means of safety and security and salvation on Yom Qiyamah. وَمَنْ لَمْ يُحَافِظْ عَلَيْهَا And whoever doesn't guard and protect and give care to performing the salat, making sure that they are performing salat, لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ نُورٌ وَلَا بُرْحَانٌ وَلَا نَجَاتٌ Then it will not be for him a light or a proof or a means of salvation. وَكَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ مَا قَارُونَ وَفِرْعَونَ وَهَامَانَ Obey ibn Khalaf. And that person who doesn't give care to the salat and the protection and preserving of the performance of the salat, on Yom Qiyamah he will be with Qarun and Fir'aun and Haman and Ubay ibn Khalaf and all of these, yani some of them you may know and some of them you may not know, but for sure you know that these are the leaders, the pillars of, the, of Kufr. Yani whoever abandons the salat, who, dev, who doesn't guard and protect the performance of salat, then he will be gathered on Yawm Qiyamah with the leaders of Kufr, with the pillars of falsehood. And we seek refuge in Allah from that. And then the Shaykh mentions a couple of hadith here. Quickly we'll go through them in, in, in consideration of the time. And these hadith, inshallah, will come back again in the yani, yani following what, what follows in the future. But these are hadith that a person needs to know. And whoever can memorize them, or at least their meaning, it will benefit you as an encouragement for you, for yourself first and foremost. And then as a help for your brothers and sisters in Islam and your family and loved ones. That you know these hadith, so that you can remind people of the severity and the seriousness of this matter. The Shaykh, he mentions, after the hadith that we just mentioned, that's the first of them. The second hadith, he said, is reported in Sahih of Muslim. Rahimahullah, on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah, radiallahu anhumah, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, Bain al-rajuli wa bain al-shirki wal-kufri, tarku salat That that which is between a man or a person, man or woman, and shirk and kufr, that which separates them from shirk and kufr, it is tarku salat Yani if a person abandons the salat, then he will fall into kufr and shirk. This is what separates the person from shirk and kufr. It is the salat. Whoever abandons it, yani as the Prophet said in another hadith, reported in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed, and it's also reported by Tirmidhi ibn Majah, on the authority of Buraydah, radiallahu anhu, on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, الذي بيننا وبينهم الصلاة فمن تركها فقد كفر الأحد الذي بيننا وبينهم الصلاة The covenant that is between us and them, is the salat. Yani the covenant, that the agreement that we have made that separates us from them, it is the salat. When you enter Islam, you agree to these things. Inshallah, somebody told you that after you bear witness to the oneness of Allah and the Prophet of Muhammad wasallam, you have to pray five times a day. That had to be the first thing they told you after your shahad attained. That's a covenant, that's an agreement. Contract. The covenant is between us and them is salat. فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرَ Then whoever abandons Salah, he has definitely, she has definitely fallen into kufr. And it also came in the Sahih of Bukhari, Rahimahullah, on the authority of Anas ibn Malik, radiyallahu anhu, an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anhu qal, man salla salatana, wa staqbala qiblatana, wa akala zabihatana, fadhalika al-muslimu alladhi lahu dhimmatu Allahi, wa dhimmatu rasulihi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَلَا تُخْفِرُوا اللَّهَ فِي ذِمَّتِهِ Yani whoever performs our prayer, the prayer of Islam or the Muslims, huh? whoever performs our prayer, and whoever faces our Qibla, that is the Kaaba, Mecca, and who eats our slaughtered animals, be careful what you eat. 
Huh? Zabiha. Not as they say, is it halal? Yes, halal. Yani it's not pork. Zabiha. These people are tricky. We're talking about the Muslims. They tell you, yes, halal. Is it zabiha? Now if he has a little bit of iman, he might hesitate. The one who performs our prayer and face our qibla and eats our slaughtered animals, then this is the Muslim الذي له ذمة الله وذمة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. This is the one who has the protection, the ahad, the amana, the trust that Allah has given them. يعني a protection and also the protection of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. So do not violate, do not break the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you break it? By not performing the salat. And other ways. And the hadith concerning this topic are many. And as I said, we'll come back to it again with many, many more hadith dealing with this topic. And these are sufficient, inshallah. And then the shaykh, yani we're coming to the end here. Trying to finish in one hour. Or hour and ten minutes, maybe. And then we come to the end here. The shaykh says, after this, he says, Fattakullah. أتباع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ومحبيه then fear Allah or followers of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and those who love him fear Allah if you are a follower of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and you love him then fear Allah واحفظوا هذه الوصية وتذكروا قوله عليه الصلاة والسلام في أيامه ولحظاته الأخيرة وفي توضيعه أمته الصلاة الصلاة so fear Allah observe taqwa of Allah and protect and preserve and guard this wasiyah, this invite, advice, instruction, legacy of the Prophet Wasallam, And remember his saying, in the last of his days, in the last moments of his life, and his, his bidding farewell to his ummah, when he said, As-salah, as-salah. The prayer, the prayer. وَانْظُرُوا فِي سِيرَةِ الْمُحِبِّينَ الصَّادِقِينَ رَعِيلَ الْأُمَّ الْأَوَّلْ and look at, examine, consider, inspect, reflect upon the, the history, the life of the truthful lovers. Yani those who are truthful in their love, real love. The first generation of this ummah. And oh how pure is this seerah. Yani this life history of the early the first generation of the Muslims, the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'een. And here the Shaykh, he mentions that which is reported by Al-Imam Muslim in his Sahih. By Al-Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, in his Sahih. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous report from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu. He said, and this narration is quite long, but if anyone memorized it, it would be good for them. But if you didn't, at least record it. He said, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يَلْقَ اللَّهَ غَدًا مُسْلِمًا مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يَلْقَ اللَّهَ غَدًا مُسْلِمًا Whoever would be pleased to meet Allah tomorrow as a Muslim. Tomorrow is what? يوم القيامة Whoever is any one of us. Would any one of us be pleased to meet Allah as a Muslim in a state of Islam and submission on Yawm Qiyamah? Everyone wants that. But it will it just be given to you freely? He said, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يَلْقَ اللَّهَ غَدًا مُسْلِمًا فَلْيُحَافِظْ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ الصَّلَوَاتِ حَيْثُ يُنَادَ بِهِنَّ Then guard and protect these Salawat, these prayers from where they are being called to. Where are they being called to from? Al Masajid. Guard them. Haithu Yunada Bihinna. From the place from where they are being called to. Fa'inna Allah Shara li Nabi Yikum. Sunan al Huda wa inna hunna min Sunan al Huda. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sunan al-Huda, the practices of guidance. Sunan al-Huda, the practices of right guidance. Wa inna hunna min Sunan al-Huda, and these prayers being performed in the place where they are being called to are from the ways of right guidance. 
that Allah has legislated for your Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sunan al Huda, Nam. ولو أنكم صليتوا في بيوتكم كما يصلي هذا المتخلف في بيته لا تركتم سنة نبيكم. And if you were to pray in your homes as this متخلف, this backward retarded one who is left behind, who lagged behind and prayed in his home, if you were to pray in your homes like this one did. Then you would have left the Sunnah of your Prophet Wasallam. So what do you say about that? How can anybody answer that? How can anybody answer that? وَلَوْ صَلَّيْتُمْ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ كَمَا يُصَلِّ هَذَا الْمُتَخَلَّفِ فِي بَيْتِهِ لَا تَرَقْتُمْ سُنَّةَ نَبِيُّكُمْ You would have left the Sunnah of your Prophet Wasallam. Then he said, and this is tremendous, وَلَوْ تَرَقْتُمْ سُنَّةَ نَبِيِّكُمْ لَضَلَلْتُمْ And if you had left the sunnah of your prophet, you would have gone astray. What is the sunnah of your prophet? The prayer in the masjid. If you pray in your homes, you would have left the sunnah of your prophet ﷺ. وَلَوْ تَرَقْتُمْ سُنَّةَ نَبِيِّكُمْ لَضَلَلْتُمْ You would have definitely gone astray. Pray in the masjid. And he went on to say, <coughs> and this is the second part of the hadith. The first part of the hadith, if you want to meet Allah, yani as a Muslim, then preserve these prayers in the place where they're being called to. And the second part, because Allah has legislated for your Prophet, the ways of guidance, and from those ways of guidance, is the prayer in the masjid. These prayers in the masjid. And if you were to pray in your homes, you would have abandoned the sunnah of your Prophet. And if you abandoned the sunnah of your Prophet, you would have indeed going astray. Then he said, وَمَا, وَمَا مِنْ رَجُلٍ يَتَطَحَّرُ فَيُحْسِنُ التُّهُورُ That there is no man or person who performs purification and performs it well. يعني يحسن التُّهُورُ Performs it well. Don't be negligent in your performance of wudu or ghusl or whatever purification you are doing. Don't be negligent in your, in your purification. Because as we already saw, the salat that's performed from the person who has done well in the wudu and then well in the khushu and well in the ruku then this person that salat will be for him a kafara for the sins that have passed before but first you have to start with purification he said there is no man who purifies himself and performs it well ثُمَّ يَعْمِدُوا إِلَى مَسْجِدٍ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْمَسَاجِدِ and then he goes intentionally to a masjid from amongst these masajid Again, this is the point of what? Salat and jama'ah in the masajid. There is no one from amongst you who performs purification and does it well and then goes with the intention and he goes to one of the masjids from these masjids. إِلَّا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِكُلِّ خَطْوَةٍ يَخْطُوهَا حَسَنًا وَيَرْفَعُ بِهَا دَرَجًا وَيَحُطُّ عَنْهُ بِهَا سَيِّئًا there is no one of you that performs wudu and performs it well and then goes to one of these masajid with the intention of salat except that Allah would record for him for every step بكل خطوة يخطوها every step that you take Allah will record for you a hasana وَيَرْفَعُهُ بِهَا darja, and he will raise you up by every step you take he will raise you up a daraja وَيَحُطُّ عَنْهُ بِهَا سَيَّا and he will remove from you by every step that you take one of your sins. Every step that you take. How many steps do you take to the masjid? At least 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 100, maybe 200, 300. Some people are walking from far. Every step you take, Allah is recording for your hasana. And he erasing one of your sayyah and raising you up a darja. For the one who does what? First and foremost, performs wudu and does it well. And then intentionally goes to the masjid for the salat. Then this is the reward that they will receive. And then he says, Radiallahu Anhu, Yani Abdul ibn Masood, he said, and this is the third part of the, of this statement that he makes here. Walaqad ra'aytuna wa ma yatakhalafu anha illa munafikun ma'lum al nifaq. Laqad ra'aytuna. He said, I have seen us, meaning who? The Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَمَا يَتَخَلَّفُ anha, And no one of us will stay behind from it. From what? The salat in jama'ah. إِلَّا 
munafikun ma'lum al nifaq no one stay behind from the salat and jama'ah in the masjid except a hypocrite whose hypocrisy was well known meaning munafikun ma'lum al nifaq meaning there were some munafiks who the people didn't know they were hypocrites they used to come to the masjid and even the hypocrites used to come to the masjid except the hypocrite everybody knew he's a hypocrite no benefit coming to the masjid he couldn't fool anybody he couldn't fool anybody everybody came to the masjid where is that at today? where is that at today? and finally he said وَلَقَدْ كَانَ الرَّجُلُ يُؤْتَ بِهِ يُهَادَ بَيْنَ الرَّجُلَيْنِ حَتَّى يُقَامَ فِي الصَّفْ that indeed there would be a man who would be brought يُؤْتَ بِهِ يُهَادَ بَيْنَ الرَّجُلَيْنِ he used to be brought to the masjid being carried between two men where did he get that example from? Listen, of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from among sahaba he said indeed there were men who would be carried to the masjid yani they would be brought to the masjid being carried between two men until they were placed in the line this is how serious they were about salah how important it is and in jama'ah in the masjid so reflect upon this radiant shining image and this honorable state which the, the noble companions of the Prophet ﷺ were upon such that they وعوا عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سنته وفهموا وصيته وحققوا اتباعه والاقتداء به يعني they fully grasp they took heed they paid attention to the يعني سنة of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and they understood his wasiya his advice and they حققوا يعني they realized actualized implemented real following and taking him as an example what about us so, they will, so the men there will be a man from amongst them he will be brought to the masjid being carried between two people with a man on his right side holding him up and a man on his left side holding him up until they would place him in the line that is the case of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while the, the reality of the condition of many of the people amongst us today who do not give weight to the salat it has no weight with them yushghiruhu anha adna al-umur wa atfa'uha wa atfa'uha yani he will be occupied with the least matter adna al-umur the least thing why he didn't come to the salat uh, he got a telephone call. Or well, he didn't come to the salat because he had to go shopping. Or oh, some nonsense. The least, of, the most trivial of things will occupy him from the salat. He couldn't make it. A lot of excuses. And the shaykh, he closes. This will stop here. So, observe taqwa of Allah in reference to this salat. Guard it. And he perform it consistently, regularly, on time, in its time, in its place. Establish the salat. And give care to its arkan. Yani the pillars of the salat. And its shurut, the preconditions of the salat. And its wajibat, the obligatory duties of the salat. And I'll add, and not because the shaykh missed it, but I just want to add. Because he's emphasizing what? The shurut the preconditions of salat that are necessary for the validity of the salat if you don't give care to those things the salat will be invalid no way, whatever you do in the salat if you haven't fulfill the shurut and the arkan of the salat the essential elements without which the salat will be invalid and the wajibat of, sal- of the salat the obligatory duties in the salat he said give care to these things riayah yani care like intense care huh like Ar-Riyaya al murakkaza <laughs> They have that where? <laughs> In the Mustashfa. <laughs> Intensive care unit. Give care, intense care to your Salat. For indeed it is the first thing that the worshipper, the slave of Allah will be asked about on Yawm al And if it is accepted, then the rest of his deeds will be accepted. And if it is rejected, then the rest of his deeds 
will be rejected. جعلنا الله عز وجل من المقيمين الصلاة ومن المتبعين للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. اللهم احشرنا في زمرته وتحت لوائه ووفقنا لاتباعه يا ذا الجلال والإكرام. أمين يا رب العالمين. And the Shaykh he makes this dua for us. May Allah accept from us and from him that Allah make us of those who establish the salat and those who truly follow strictly the Prophet ﷺ and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us up in his group on Yawm al under his banner and grant us the success and the ability of following him Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika Shadu an la ilaha illa anta Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk and inshallah, perhaps next week we'll read the hadith that the Shaykh mentioned here in the end about the person whose salat, yani if it is accepted, the rest of the deeds will be accepted and, and likewise the opposite. Naam. Naam. Naam, you will be raised up. Yani, we know that it, you will be raised up in degrees, meaning your status in front of Allah will be higher. Your status in front of Allah will be high in this world and the next life. In this world and the next life. Now, salat will benefit you most, most importantly in the next life. When I, daraja means your level, your place, your status, your position. Now, in our jannah, Allahu Alam. But I mean your status. Indeed, your status with Allah subhanahu wa taala will be raised up. Now.